All right, this is Dr. Moore with Uncivilized Vitality, and we're going through the eight categories or families of pre-civilized technology or uncivilized tools. Uh, and you find those outlined in your student handbook. Today we're going to talk about the first tool, which is the, the morigami, uh, or your cloth, uh, clothing, uh, shelter, um, kind of flexible type tools. So um, we use the term morigami uh, from uh, my special obsession with these kerchiefs and, and bandanas and such, and uh, uh, a blend of the word origami, so you can fold them into so many different things. Uh, furushiki and uh, bojagi are the Japanese and Korean uh, arts of folding these cloth um, tools. It is the first tool because the first part of technology that um, pre-civilized humans probably came up with was some sort of clothing to protect against the elements. And they're going along with the rules of threes, uh, exposure is going to be your first one after bleeding and breathing that you need to protect yourself from and that's going to be these tools here. So basically we recommend um, three materials silk, wool, and cotton and they all have their different uses. Obviously uh, silk and wool are best in the winter, cotton is best in the summer, although silk can go uh, either way. Now your morigami besides just these cloth tools will include things like uh, a hat, right? That's a nice wool beanie. Uh, you got to have a hat and gloves. So you should always include a hat and gloves in your, uh, or even mittens when it's real cold out, in your morigami kit. The um, uh, hat could be, I always keep a beanie and then a sun hat in the summer, something with a full brim to protect my neck and ears. Having said that, uh, you can fashion a hat out of the morigamis if you don't um, bring your hat with you. The first one, um, this is silk. And this is what we call our standard size, which is about uh, anywhere from uh, 33 inches or so, the size of a large neckerchief. This is the silk. This is the green color that's in our local chapter, the Genesee County Turtles. And we just keep that around our neck. Uh, very reminiscent of a, a Boy Scout uh, neckerchief or a cowboy bandana. We just use that. Uh, hold it around the next part of uniform. 101 uses, check out all the other videos on morigami uses. So that's a standard size. Uh, I also have a black merino wool in the standard size. And this one is from North by North. Uh, North X North is the website where I got these. They're a little spendy, but uh, I've had this one for oh, probably eight years. Uh, very nice in the winter. That's a wool. Everyone's probably more familiar with these uh, shemag, which is a large, kind of our standard size, about as big as you'd get uh, in cotton. Readily available at Army Surplus stores for less than 10 bucks. Hundreds of uses with these things. You always want to have, uh, depending on the winter, you always have your silk with you, hot or cold, wool in the winter, and then maybe the cotton for um, the um, warmer months. Uh, some other sizes, we can use a rectangular size, same sort of thing, cotton wool or silk. This one is a, a sash, right? It's a long cotton rectangle. It goes around the waist as a sash to hold your coat. Uh, you can make bundles out of it, but it's rectangular shaped. This would fall into what we call our, our blanket size, which is uh, not square. So you get a square one, a standard size, and uh, different materials. The blanket size, which is more of a rectangle, um, another uh, shape besides the rectangle and square is a, a tube, a tubular shape, right? This is a, a buff, this is the merino wool, the extra long buff. And these, these have hundreds of uses, uh, mostly as a hat or a neck gaiter uh, to keep you warm, but you can use them as, as a, uh, a standard uh, handkerchief. So having the tubular shape is great. A large size uh, tube morigamis are also great for making um, improvised day packs or wearing as a, a quick uh, kilt or an extra piece of clothing or uh, just an extra thing to keep warm. Fold that in a triangle and then you could do some uh, wrap it around like a shawl, right? You wear it in different, different configurations. So the three shapes we use would be the tube, uh, large or pocket size. The uh, square and the rectangle and then they come in a standard size a small or pocket size we say that's basically your handkerchief size right? so you got a handkerchief size um, 
this maybe be a pocket sized tube. Then you have the standard size, which are these large squares like the silk or a shemog. Then you get into the large or blanket size, which would be this large tube or that sash uh, or an actual blanket. This is my, um, my patu. This is an Afghani blanket. It's made of uh, rough uh, wool. It's pretty itchy. It's pretty thin, uh, but it is actual blanket size. So if I open that up, it's hard to show you these sizes, but this is like an actual blanket, right? Rectangular shape, actual blanket, hundreds of uses. Uh, even in the summer, I have this one with me uh, for chilly nights or for use as an outer garment at camp. Could also construct a, a more um, personal shelter with that. So that's a large blanket size. Also, the good old military surplus standard issue wool blanket. Doesn't, it's not very big, but just having a standard blanket uh, made of wool with you as part of your morigami kit is a great idea. You could use a... Uh, so this is kind of a large sort of insulated blanket or a, like a large wooby um, insulated. This one in particular is from Wilderness Innovations. This goes into their PSS kit with their poncho. They snap. Uh, also blanket size. So having at least one blanket, preferably a <clears throat> uh, wool uh, or uh, a blended or man-made fiber in your morigami kit is essential, even in the warmer months. Having a large uh, towel sized or sash sized, sash sized uh, morigami is also helpful. In that case, we use the hood because it, it, uh, it can be both blanket or, or the hood uses, like a sarong or a uh, improvised kilt. I always have one or two pocket size, just a handkerchief or bandana on me, typically one in the cotton, and then I keep a wool um, tube-shaped pocket size, and then of course my uh, silk is always with me. That usually gets me by, and then one, um, maybe a standard or a large shemog size I can use uh, for various purposes. Now at the, the far end is our tarp size, or our, our jumbo. Okay. Uh, this is literally a tarp, so it's not made of the uh, cotton wool or silk that the lower shapes and sizes are made. This is a man-made. This one in particular is the uh, Dyneema 8.5 square from uh, Hyperlite Mountain Gear. Uh, great. It weighs almost nothing. Uh, they're pretty spendy, though, uh, for a Dyneema tarp, but I can fashion any shelter I need with that in my Morigami kit. Another one I've come across recently, which I've been pretty impressed with, is a pocket size uh, shelter kit. This is the T60, it's an emergency shelter system, and this is uh, from Cold Cracker Bushcraft. So uh, check them out, I think these are relatively new. I believe it's five by seven, but look how small it packs up. It goes right in my pocket, so I always have a shelter kit with me in my morigami, in my tool kit. Doesn't weigh hardly anything. It comes with the uh, cords already attached. Um, Best in a, in a, in a small lean-to configuration, whereas as opposed to this Dyneema tarp, uh, eight and a half square, I can do a lot of different configurations with this. I can fly in a diamond pattern over my tarp, uh, my hammock. I can rig up a, a plow point. I can do a quick A-frame. Uh, this one's kind of limited, but even smaller and easier to carry as part of your origami kit. <clears throat> Continue with the jumbo or shelter end, having a, a good... A couple of garbage bags or a 55 gallon drum liner, heavy duty 3 to 5 mil uh, const uh, construction bag is always good to have for a ground sheet, an improvised um, set of rain gear, uh, clean up trash around the area. There's no end to use of these things. Having some sort of ground tarp to go with your uh, shelter kit is a good idea. This one's from uh, Arcturx Outdoor Gear. This is just one of those uh, so-called space blankets uh, or gum rubber blankets. These are, these are great. I just throw this together with um, one of my tarps and a garbage bag and a blanket. I've got a full set, a full kit to go in any configuration. Another good idea, this is just a USGI surplus poncho. Okay. You can use the poncho for uh, ground cloth, shelter, rainwater collection, uh, keep the sun off, and these are pretty inexpensive. I like to run the, um, the Poncho Survival 
shelter system from Wilderness Innovations. They're made out of a real heavy duty Cordura. A um, little bigger than this, but uh, that one you can actually fashion into a hammock by running through the, the um, built-in channels they have in the end with a Dyneema cord or paracord, and you can hook that to trees and actually sleep in that poncho. I wouldn't try it with one of these USGIs, uh, but you can make a shelter out of it. <clears throat> so your Morigami, you want to have at least a pocket-sized cotton bandana, a standard-sized silk, and then some item of wool, either pocket size or standard. Having at least one tube shaped um, item with you is a good idea, a buff or a, um, a full size uncivilized uh, hood shape. A blanket and a tarp of some sort, tarp slash rain gear, and of course hat and gloves. And then uh, check out our other videos, we'll show you hundreds of ways to use just these small amounts of tools for your shelter, staying warm, um, making bags, belts, uh, there's no end to the uses of the Morigami. So that is your um, Morigami class of uncivilized tools, and that's the one we use most often, and it's the most important. So don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel, and uh, check out the other videos in our, our, our categories of tools. Thanks.